Welcome to Gay Fairfax, the capital area's only weekly gay entertainment magazine featuring news, views, and pride. I'm David Job, And I'm Dave Hughes. Each week, we'll feature events and personalities of interest to the gay women and men in the metropolitan D.C. area. On this week's edition, we'll be interviewing someone who is no stranger to Gay Fairfax viewers, Dorothy Hirsch, one of our own hosts and comic extraordinaire. And then, we'll show you highlights from Gay Fairfax's second anniversary party held at Club 5878. And we have a special surprise for you. That's right. So let's get started. Michelle Michaels recently interviewed Dorothy, who is not only one of the co-hosts of our program, but has also been seen on Gay Fairfax in Dorothy, Deborah, and the girl bands. Whether Dorothy's ad-libbing or performing in her stand-up comedy routine, she's bound to make you laugh. And we've captured a few zany moments from outtakes from this program. And we'll also see yet another aspect of Dorothy's multifaceted talent. That's part of the surprise we've promised you. That's right. So here's Dorothy. On Gay Fairfax, I've had the unique pleasure to work with so many wonderful and talented people. Well, today is not one of those times. <laughs> oh, stop. Do you feel the pressure to be funny like when you go out with your friends? And, wait a minute, <laughs> and how, how do you deal with yourself when you're not funny? Well, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, <laughs> what an absurd question. Um, well, I've been in intensive psychotherapy for the last year and a half to, to, to rid myself of that need to be funny with my friends. So now I go out in public and intimidate total strangers, which is much healthier. What's your therapist number? It's <laughs> one nine hundred. Right, right. When we when we think of lesbian comics, we think of people like Lynn Labner and Kate Clinton. Do you envision your career going like theirs in a national scene? Well, I have flip flopped back and forth. Mm -hmm. I thought at first. Yes, I'll be a lesbo comedian. And I thought, no, you can't be a real comedian. You can't be a real star unless you get the mainstream. But then I thought, these people are, you know, don't laugh at the stuff that I think is funny. Women laugh at what I think is funny. So I can hit mainstream audiences through the women. Uh, I figure that my only just do stuff that I think is funny and if other people like it then that's cool and that's where my career will end up I'm you know I kind of like to get into the music festival scene because because you know then you get to like perform in front of hundreds and thousands of women and sometimes they don't even wear their tops did you know that no I didn't yes, yes. I added plus yes. yes she has four <laughs> that's her heart oh. <laughs> Uh, now I see where the answer to this question I'll be going, but I don't want to prejudice you. No. Okay. Are you drawing from material from your reality, or are you constantly envisioning the world as if it might be if it was truly a funny place? Well, the world is, of course, deadly serious. So, naturally, my humor has to come from somewhere else. I have skywriters. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I seem to see the world a little differently, and so to me it makes perfect sense. Others find it funny. I've been laughed at for years. <laughs> it's too early for the bars to be open, and uh, uh, I missed the 12-step meeting. <laughs> so I pulled the rig over to the side, reached into my jacket, and pulled out my places of interest to women. <laughs> Found a feminist bookstore, headed the semi on out that way. <laughs> All right, it was an 18 foot U haul, so. <laughs> Still was a bitch to park. There are different types of comedy. For example, there's intellectual comedy like George Carlin, there's character comedy like Carol Burnett, and slapstick like um, Buster Keaton. Now, where do you fit in? Do you fit in anywhere? Well, all my life I've wanted to fit in, Michelle. All my life. The kids on the playground, they used to play with me. I hated that. No, oh, um, my, my, my comedy role models were always Victor Borga, Anna Russell, and I was raised on the Marx Brothers, so that's kind of, you know, I, I would love to be seen as an Anna Russell, Victor Borga type person who do an awful lot of ad-libbing and, and, and just have a good time. Real simple stuff, except I don't play the piano or sing, so it's kind of... We're rough. glad. No, but I will sing for you now. No, I would like to sing. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, great. 
to the divine church, to the divine, divineness. I am the reverend mother, daughter, sister woman. <laughs> with a dead audience. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you can't kill them because they're already dead. Um, yeah, that's a toughie. It's, it's self-doubt. My performing, I, I kind of connect with the audience, and then I feed off of what I get from them. I do an awful lot of ad-libbing. So when they're dead, it's like drowning. Um, the fun part of stand-up comedy is when you really connect it in with the audience and you can just play. So I said to you, what? Can you feel it? by profession. Do you use that to uh, express your serious side? Do you have a serious side? Or did you really become a librarian? This is... Yes! Want to see, yes. see my diploma? Prove it, prove it, prove I got it. Okay. <laughs> Why, Where is it? What a remarkable coincidence. <laughs> you just happen to have it here. Here is my diploma. Look. Let camera? me see. Is there anything in it? <laughs> Open it. Look, look. Is your name Master on it? Yes. Let me, let me read it. Yeah, it says, your name, Dorothy Hirsch. Are they spelled Dorothy it right? A Hirsch. A Hirsch. Yeah. And it's in English. I so, heard that. That's right. Yes. Yes. So, Master of Science in Library Science. Well, congratulations. Right. I couldn't get them to write mistress, but it was sad. <laughs> yeah. Took me $15,000 to get this piece of plastic. Yep, I'm a librarian. Okay. But librarians aren't serious. Librarians are really beautiful people. Librarians are deep. You know, when you really want to know something, who do you go to? You go to a librarian. Your mother won't give you the straight answer, but a librarian will. At their fingertips, they have reference books, which makes it really hard to eat. <laughs> but finally, I've come to admit it to myself. I can't deny it any longer, but I do need your support. Please don't hate me. I'll just, I'll just tell you, I'll just, I'll just say it. I'm a, 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 I'm a, I'm a librarian. It was so freeing. Thank you. I recently told my parents, and it's the hardest thing I've ever done. I couldn't deny it any longer. I mean, it got so that they'd come to visit and I'd mess up the bookshelves. <laughs> I'd have to censor my conversation. I'd evade questions about my professional life, telling them I was a construction worker. <laughs> We're in the military. <laughs> starting to suspect something to ask casual questions like, uh, catalog any good books lately? <laughs> well, what would you like for your birthday, dear? A cardigan? <laughs> and they'd say things like, you know, we love you very much, but there are just some things we don't want to know. <laughs> Have some more alphabet soup. <laughs> Dorothy really hands it up when we shoot Gay Fairfax. Look at Ginsu steak knives. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll get the big one, the little one, good for coring and picking. <laughs> Dorothy, how about that, that group goth? One night we were shooting late into the evening and we were all tired. Right, 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 <laughs> do anything just to keep alive here at Gay Fair. Pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not vegetarians. We're carnivores. Some of us are omnivores. You know, no, this table used to be taller. Legs are gone. Why, Alice, our camera woman was six two when we started. So <laughs> talk about Richard. We now call him Little Dick. <laughs> Still thinking about joining Gay Fairfax? Well, why haven't you done something about it? Our crew, production staff, and talent come from all over the metropolitan D.C. area and from different occupations and backgrounds. But we all have two things in common, an interest in the television arts and in issues of interest to gay women and men. Don't think that you need to know how to run a camera or an audio board to be part of Gay Fairfax. You can learn right here on the set while having fun during one of our productions. So don't put it off any longer. Give us a call at area code 703 370 8028. That's our new 24 hour answering line. So call today at 703 370 8028. So, Dave, what about that surprise you promised us? All right, David. Recently, Gay Fairfax celebrated its second anniversary of cable broadcasting with a party at Club 5878 in Arlington, Virginia. The party was sponsored by the club and by the Fairfax Lesbian and Gay Citizens Association. Music for dancing was provided by that fabulous DJ, Pauline Skunk Dross of Dross Dynamics. Michelle Michaels interviewed the proprietor of the club as well as several people at the party. But that's not all. Now for that surprise. Michelle also v interviewed some of the stars for the upcoming dramatic serial to be broadcast this fall on Gay Fairfax. You mean Inside Outside the Beltway? That's right. Several of the stars were on hand and Michelle Michaels got some exclusive interviews. You were there too, weren't you, David? Well, yes, but that's another story. Let's get on with the anniversary party and those interviews. It's a good show. I think I, what I particularly like are usually the interviews, um, and I also like the uh, record reviews, which I always find amusing. I don't know why. I think they're great. Um, I like the community forum very, very much when we start um, talking with people who are active in the political process in Northern Virginia, especially. Um, but I think particularly what I like about Gay Fairfax is that it does diversify. Um, and it does a lot of different segments um, dealing with, you know, music or concerts, um, literature. Um, it just doesn't deal with the political aspect of gay activism, which I think is an excellent, excellent opportunity for straight uh, people to, you know, see that we're just not activists um, in that sense of the word. Do you think Gay Fairfax could ever be a, a mainstream show? I think the potential there is tremendous, um, I think, for, you know, creating change in straight America. Uh, in regards to how they view gay society. Um, 
whether or not they're ready for that, I think that they are. I really do. I think the time has come, and we're making tremendous strides um, in just being present to straight society and showing them that, hey, we're not all these... Uh, the misconceptions that they have about us are just not there anymore. They're beginning to see that we're normal people, we have normal jobs, and look, we have TV shows that are similar to what you would watch on, you know, CBS or ABC. Um, I think that's uh, an excellent opportunity for us to, you know, expose ourselves to them in a positive light. Well, one of the things that I do like and that I recommend to anybody to keep on watching is if you're not able to participate in any of the community activities, even Gay Pride Day, uh, to be able to catch the reruns, per se, to see what you missed is really very beneficial. Last year at Gay Pride, I was so busy working the booth that I never got anywhere near the stage to see the acts. And yet I can turn it in and catch it on Sunday night. So you felt like you were really there through the eyes of Gay Fairfax? Yes, and able to see everything that I wasn't able to catch while I was physically there. Instant replay is wonderful. <laughs> I had met Scott Olson, one of the stars of the soap, um, at, there was an old-timers film festival that Dignity was running, and I went just to socialize, and I'd met him there, and I talked with him for about an hour about it, and at the time, I didn't know that he was a star of the, of the soap, then after I read about it, you know, in the Blade, I said, oh, I know him, I said, that's fantastic, you know, that's some sort of theatrical experience coming into uh, Gay Fairfax. Well, what do you think the soap's impact might be? Um... I'm not sure. I don't know the storyline yet. This guy didn't tell you anything about the plot? No, he's keeping that strictly confidential for some reason. I'm trying to, you know, ease it out of him, but he's, he's very tight-lipped about that, so. Well, I've heard you're going to be doing one. I've heard that you were having uh, interracial couples, and I think it's about time, because the numerous times I've sat around in the past with all friends talking about gossip and saying, oh boy, could we make a soap opera out of this? But they'd never believe it. And now we're going to have that soap opera. Are you going to watch it? Definitely. But you would hope that with every programming of this sort and everything that Gay Fairfax does, that it helps to um, broaden people's um, expectations and ideas and, and thoughts and concepts about the gay community. Um, just a little bit I've seen of the um, characters and uh, some of the script. It looks like it's part of everyday life and not many people get to see everyday gay life and they have um, a, um, probably a very weird view of what that is, but it's, it's us, it's everyone, it's, we're everywhere. Yeah. Tell me what you can about the plot of this soap. Oh, you know I can't do that. Oh, I can't. That's uh, it's closed for now. We'll we'll reveal plot. Just it's gonna be excellent. <laughs> so cool. It's really cool. It's great. You sound really excited about it. Oh, I am more than excited. It's it's a chance to really bring um, it's a chance to annihilate straight thinking about gays and show what gay people are really like and. Um, show people that we are human beings and how we work on a day-to-day -day basis with each other and how we interact basically with people on a whole. Um, the plot, which I cannot tell you, shows all of that, brings all that into play. It's really great. You're such a tease. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I, that's what they say, except I'm a, I'm a real goody-goody, okay? <laughs> so we know that much about the plot. You're a goody-goody in the, in the soap. And I'm an English professor. What is your real name and what is the character you play in the soap? Hello, my name is Olga Torishnikova. No, I tell us your real name. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you knew it when you left home. Like, all right, I know it, I know it, I know it. She can do it, she can do it. Go ahead, no, honey, um, honey. I'm, I'm, my, oh, forget it. Dor <laughs> She's having those memory lapses again. Dorothy Hirscht. Hirscht. Hirsch. Yeah. Hirsch, 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 Dorothy Hirsch. Yeah. And what is your character in the play? Um, I'm playing Madeline Hutchins, Dr. Maddie, to you. And, uh, yeah, I'm a biology professor. Unbelievable, but true. I think so. <laughs> and my real name is Leslie Lapidus, and I'm actually an editor, part of the media empire that's oppressing everybody else. But um, in the show, I play Cindy Castellano, an ad executive, oppressing people in a completely different way. Tell me about the plot. 
Well, I know that Maddie wants to have a baby. So I'm having to ask all of my friends who want to have babies why <laughs> they want to do that. I mean, is your research for the part? Exactly. Stanislavski would, uh, would uh, roll over in his grave to see the way I'm researching this one. Yeah. <laughs> but why? Why do you want a baby? <laughs> what about you? Well, I've done the same thing. I've asked all the men I know at work who have children why they wanted to have children. And I'm getting some really strange replies like... Because I can't. <laughs> no, no, they, they didn't say that. These are new age men. They say things like, um, well, curiosity. Um, <laughs> I wanted to see what it would be like. And I thought, why didn't you just babysit better? <laughs> Where were you when you got the news you got the part in the soap, and how'd you feel about that? I'm sure you felt it was a mistake. It was a thrill, Michelle. <laughs> there I was, in the shower. The phone rang. I nearly electrocuted myself. <laughs> Too bad you didn't. <laughs> it was a shock, but I... <laughs> I came out of it. When I came to, um, I was thrilled beyond words. I just sat there. <laughs> it was a moment. Ever told you how much I adore you? No, you can start now. Leslie, Cindy. She, she finds it so hard to keep it straight. I'm getting a little worried she's starting to follow me home. Um, my name is Roxanne Rucker, and my character's name is Barbara Powell. Uh, Barbara Powell is a legislative aide to a senator from Alabama, I believe, uh, Senator Montgomery Hale. Where were you when you got the announcement that you had the part, and how did that feel? Um, I think I was... Uh, at a party and I called home to check my messages and uh, my roommate told me that the executive producer had called and wanted me for a part and I immediately thought no way and uh, we exchanged calls for several days and finally uh, I got the word that not only did I have a part that, w that I was in um, I guess the first 12 episodes or 12 of the first 30 episodes so that's pretty exciting um, I still haven't gotten over it. All my friends want my autograph. Uh, my parents uh, tease me. Um, it's really great. That's fantastic. Um, what can you tell me about the plot of the soap? I, I could probably tell you a whole lot, but I'm not. You'll just have to uh, tune in and uh, see for yourself. <laughs> you guys are being so secretive. I love it and hate it at the same time. Um, tell me about what the first reading was like and what the people are like that you're going to be working with? Uh, I have nothing but the uh, greatest respect for the people. Um, I've never seen actors and actresses put such life and feeling into um, black words on a white page. It was just absolutely astounding to watch the characters come to life before your eyes. They're an exciting bunch. I think they're going to be a lot of fun to work with. Okay, my real name is Steve Getman. Uh, the part I play in the soap is Justin Moore. He's a lawyer in uh, Lenny Ramirez's firm, and he's bisexual. Uh, can you tell us any about the plot? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> you guys are really uh, strict about the secrecy stuff. Uh, that's right. <laughs> All right, let's see. You've, tell me if you've acted before, and if so, how does this part compare to other parts you've done? Well, I, yeah, I have acted before. Um, all in community theater. I haven't acted professionally, um, but I did a lot of work in Memphis, which, strangely enough, is a wonderful theater town, um, both college theater, community theater. There are a couple of theaters there that actually pay people. Um, so that's, uh, but I haven't, hadn't done anything in Washington before. And uh, the way that this compares to other roles that I've had, uh, this is pretty new experience. And uh, this is the most out that I've ever been, certainly because it's going to be cable cast, uh, it's, it's pretty far out there. Did you have to do a lot of soul searching to make the decision to do this? No, not at all. I was really excited about doing it. Um, number one, because it's, it's, uh, it's a way to, to realize some of my activist sorts of goals, and also because it's, you know, because I just, I love doing theater in general. And so it's, it's really a great combination of those two parts of my life and I'm really happy to be doing it. Although, you know, I, I, did, I did think for maybe a second or two about, oh my God, what are my parents going to think when, when they see that I'm, I'm, you know, way, way out there and being really political. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be doing it. What do you think the soap's impact will be? Well, I hope that its impact will be educative because uh, I think that not only gay people but, as well, but straight people as well are going to see it and are going to see uh, gay people as... 
as real people and as people that have that are in some ways very different from straight people and in other ways just the same as straight people. <laughs> I think our time is up. What do you think, Dorothy? Oh, check my watch. <laughs> Let me see if our time is up. <laughs> just about. What do you think, Leslie? It looks up to me. <laughs> I'll put the beak on that. <laughs> David, I can't wait for the premiere of Inside Outside the Beltway this September. Me either, Dave, but we've run out of time for this week. Be sure to tune in again next week at this time, and check your local listings for other dates and times that Gay Fairfax can be seen in your area. So, for Gay Fairfax, I'm Dave Hughes. And I'm David Job. Thank you for watching, and remember to keep the pride alive.